Happy Monday to you. I'm about an hour and a half late, so I apologize for that. But I do thank you for watching, and I trust that you're having a great Monday and that it's a good start to a new week. Uh, nothing to do with the study of the Bible. I was thinking of Ecclesiastes where it says, his, or Lamentations, his mercies, mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So I hope that you have a great Monday and it's a start to a great week. Well, this week we're going to finish up our study of the Bible and then we're going to be doing a new study. If you're watching this anytime, uh, the week that I have planned ahead, uh, I have meetings and things scheduled, so it's going to be a hit and miss on what time I'm coming. So uh, I'm ap apologizing ahead of time for the sporadicness uh, and the lack of being able to be on at 930. So I hope that you're still able to enjoy this, whether it's live or on replay. So today we're going to look at our study of the Bible. We're going to be in the general epistles and what are the general epistles. Before we get into that, let's do our reminder of the things we are studying about the Bible. We believe that the Bible is God's spoken word, that he literally, he spoke it as he spoke creation. And it, just as we see the power of creation, we can see the power of God's word whenever we read it and then apply it to our lives. The human authors, they were the ones to take down the words that God spoke to them. We know that there are 66 different books written over 1,600 years with 40 different kings, apostles, prophets or leaders as the authors. We know that the Old Testament was written mostly in Hebrew and it was a pointing to the promised Messiah. Here's what you look for when the Messiah is coming and this is what to be on the lookout for. The New Testament written mostly in Greek looks back at the life of Christ and says the promised Messiah, he was Jesus and this is his life and this is the result of what happened when his life, death, death and resurrection occurred. And then finally, we look at the printing press. And before the printing press in 1455, the Bible was copied by hand by scribes who had a meticulous process for ensuring that it was copied correctly. So today we're in uh, almost to the end of the Bible, and it's the general epistles. And these are letters. Remember, the word epistle means letter or communication. This is the general letter. It's called general epistles, and they were written by other apostles or leaders. So the Gospels were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the rest, of, and then Acts was written by Luke, excuse me, and then we get into Paul's letters, and the other letters that we're going to look at were written by other apostles or leaders. For example, some of them were written by Peter, some of them were written by John, and one of them was written by Jude for examples of leaders. So they're still inspired scripture, just not written by Paul. And these general epistles, they were addressed to the early Christians to provide encouragement during their time of persecution, to provide guidance for them, and also to provide a warning against false teaching. And if you want to take a step back, a broad stroke through these eight books that we're going to look at, that's a common theme through many of them. It's a warning against the false teachers or a warning against false teaching. And this is the beginning of the, the Bible that's being um, passed out and copied down and the church is taking off and there is bad teaching happening. So these epistles are written to clarify what good teaching is and what Christ has done and how our lives can be changed. So let's launch into it. The book of Hebrews, we don't know who wrote Hebrews, but we think it's Paul. We're not sure if it's Paul, but we think it's Paul, but no one's 100% sure. So if you look, most study Bibles would say we think it's Paul, but we're unsure. Hebrews is about Jesus is better than and over the old covenant. There was an old covenant, an old sacrificial system of how you needed to sacrifice animals. And Hebrews clarifies how Jesus is better than the old covenant. He is over the old covenant. There is a new covenant, the sacrifice, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that goes over or trumps over or, or continues. Well, I'm struggling this morning. I'm sorry. Is better than the old covenant. James is written for the early church to live out your faith in the Christian community. So many times we face persecution and James is written on how do we put feet to our faith and how do we live out our faith during a time 
of persecution. And that's a great book to read when you're going through difficult times. If you want to look on my Facebook or go on the, on the church website or on my YouTube account, we have our Bible study in the book of James that we did through the pandemic, which was March, April, and in through May. First Peter was written to call Christians that they are called to a higher standard. We are called to a different standard, not a better standard, not to make ourselves feel better, but we are following after God and God says, be holy because I am holy. So first Peter is written and calling Christians to a standard of holiness. We need to be able to act the right way. Second Peter is written as a warning against false teachers. There's bad doctrine that Peter wants to take care of, and so he writes to correct that. First John is written and encouraging the church to love in Christ. When we come into church, we need to show love. What is love? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Love keeps no record of wrong. And so John is a good encouragement that we need to love each other in Christ. Second John is written to warn against the false teachings. Again, the theme of false teaching. There's bad doctrine being taught, bad doctrine being believed. And second John is written to correct that so that there's good, true, God honoring teaching happening in his church. Third John is uh, we're going to praise a man named Gaius because he is very loyal and he is staying true to the word of God. There's another man, his name is called Diatrimes, and he is chastised or disciplined or corrected because his heart is full of pride. So you can see an example of what to do and how to behave, and an example of how not to behave. And then the book of Jude is a warning against the false teachings. So you see a couple times, I'm looking at my notes about three, possibly four books that's dealing with false teachings and a warning against false teachers. So the challenge for us on this Monday morning is it's so important, so very, very important to be careful of who and what you listen to. There's a lot of people saying a lot of things some of them are God honoring and biblically accurate. Some of them are not God honoring and they are not biblically accurate. We want to continue to stay true to God's word. We want to be able to look to God's word, be able to be equipped so that we have the right beliefs and the right practices. We need to study to show ourselves approved. We need to be able to handle the word of God correctly. So we want to study and work to make sure that we follow God's word, that we don't follow someone's opinion. And that's my hope and prayer for you. It's my hope and prayer for me that each day we study, we just won't take someone's word for it. We will go and we will study so that we can continue to follow God's word. I hope you have a great Monday. I will see you on Tuesday. I think I'm going to be here at 930, uh, but I'm not sure based upon how my day looks. So I will see you sometime tomorrow where we have one book left. Do you know what that book is? It's a book that everyone's very interested in, and I will share from that book tomorrow. Have a great Monday.